Hey everyone, it is Monday, which means we're back with another Smart Suite Showcase. If you're new here, this series is all about giving you insights on how customers are using our platform based on the implementations our onboarding team has done this past week. In this episode, we're gonna be taking a look at recurring projects, templated tasks from those projects, and how to schedule time for those tasks so you can manage your team's workload effectively. We're going to be using a marketing agency example in this video, but this process can really apply to any business in any industry. So stick around and you may learn a thing or two. Let's dive right in. We are back instead of our Smart Speed homepage, and we're gonna be taking a look at this agency marketing showcase solution here. I base this off of our agency marketing solution. So if you wanna look at something very similar to what I'm looking at here, go to our solution library and download this template. We have projects, which are linked to tasks, a project can have multiple tasks. We have the work requests for projects, and then also the clients and contacts of those projects as well. We'll start over inside of the client projects, and we'll take a look inside of a record view to see what we're working with. The top, we have the general information, the frequency, who is this for, the task for the project work requests, and at the bottom, we have financial and time info. So if you're a marketing agency, you probably have retainers or projects that happen on a recurring basis. This may happen monthly, weekly, or quarterly. I'm gonna show two examples, one project that happens monthly and one that happens weekly. So the trigger for this reoccurring project lies inside of this formula field here, and it's called is project current. And you can see there's ones and zeros right here. To summarize this, this means if you have a project in the month of January, at the start of February, it's going to move from one to zero because the month of due date is no longer matching the month of now which means this formula field is going to change from one to zero. And that's exactly what we're gonna use for this trigger here. Moving over to the automations, creates recurring projects automation right here. And when a record match condition where that formula field changes from one to zero, you're going to create a project and it's gonna pull information from that previous project and put it into the new project. This is a great way to schedule recurring projects and even recurring tasks that happen at the start of every month or the start of every week. If you did want to create recurring tasks that happen in the middle of the week or happen in the middle of a month, I would recommend you check out the add a scheduled time trigger that allows you to create recurring projects or tasks on a set interval on certain days of the week at certain times and starting from a certain date. So now let's move over to the production tasks and let's get a quick overview here. If you open up a record, we can see we once again have the general information at the top who it's assigned to, who's reviewing. We're pulling the client using a lookup field from the project, and we have the task type. We can move down and see we have work requests. We also have time and estimates, which we're going to be taking a look at in a bit. Subtasks, and then content and deliverables. If you create a project, and it's a certain type of project, you probably have a set of tasks that need to happen based on the product type. So let's take this project here. For example, it's a monthly project. Once December hits, it's going to create a new record. And because it's a social media type project, a templated set of tasks are being created inside of the production tasks app. Now I can't fast forward time. So for this example, I'm just going to create a new record and show you the task being created based on the type. You can create a project from this new record button in any view here. Let's open it up and let's fill this out. All right. I filled out this project. And as we can see, the project type is social media. When I say the project, the project is created here. When we jump over to the social media section, we can see that the tasks are being created inside of this grouping and they're linked back to the project. Moving back to projects, I'm going to create another project for a different type. So I fill out this information here and this time I chose the retainer project type. Let's save it. It's going to create that record inside of here. And when we move back to production tasks, we can see that the tasks are being created here, but they are grouped into different sections. We have one task going to social, we have one going to design, and then we have one going to copy. You can really customize the set of tasks that are created based on the type of the project. This is just an example. Now we have a result where projects are recurring on a weekly or monthly basis based on their frequency, and they're creating a set of templated tasks based on the type of project that they are. And if you're a manager, you probably wanna schedule time to allocate the work to your team. I created a task scheduling few for just that, and we're grouping by assigned to, and then a couple formula fields, which I'll explain. So if I open up a record and go down to time and estimates, we can see we have the days until due and weeks until due. The days until due is taking the number of days 
from now compared to the due date, it's adding this to the days out text once we convert that number to text. And as a result, we get things like one day out, two days out, etc. Inside of the weeks until due, we have the same thing, but instead of using days, we're using weeks inside of the date difference. Feel free to pause the video to check out those formulas there. So if you're a manager and you come to this view, you can go to this grouping and hit collapse all to really condense the information. That way you can jump into a particular person, pick a particular week, pick a particular day, and then look at the tasks assigned to them for that day. What we can do is add the allocated time for a particular task inside of this field here. And the formula field is going to track that and using a column footer, we're gonna sum up the value of those hours allocated. So you can see the total time assigned to a particular person for a particular day. That way you can really spread out the work that's happening between people and you can make sure workloads are being balanced to help keep your team very efficient. Let's say that you're working with a lot of tasks across many teams and this one overall view is a little overwhelming. What you can do is break this up into different views and actually created different views based on the team. So if I click in the design scheduling view, this is only going to show me tasks that are in design. That way you can schedule time on a team by team basis. You can do the same for social where you jump in, collapse all by default, pick a particular person, open up a particular week and a day as well. And then you can start allocating time here. So now that you've allocated all the time and it's a very balanced, manageable workload between your team, what they can do is do the work right inside of here. So inside of the tasks, as they're doing the work, they can put the content and deliverables inside of here. And they can also track the time right inside of this using the time tracking log. As they're doing work, they can add submissions and this will count towards the time tracking total. You can see how much you're going to be charging the client based on the time and which task type it is. That wraps up this smart suite showcase. Hopefully through that marketing example, you understand how to create recurring projects based on a particular frequency that create templated tasks. And then from there, you can schedule time to your team to help manage their workload very effectively. If there's a particular use case you want to see in a future showcase, feel free to leave that in the comments below, as well as with all your questions. I'll make sure to answer them. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you next Monday.